Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker and we are in the 2023 Nissan Kicks and this is a really economical car for a first car, for a commuter vehicle, at a very low price point. So we are going to take this one for a tour around Tyler and give you our impressions. Stay tuned. All right, Holly, here we are, Nissan Kicks. We've got, first thing I want to call attention to is the surround view monitor. So even at basically an entry level vehicle, we've got a full 360 camera on this, which huge kudos uh, from me. What are your thoughts so far on some of the safety tech in this? Um, I really like the that video. The even surround the surround view monitor. The surround view <laughs> monitor. Even though I still use my head. Yes, you do. <laughs> I still roll down the window and stick my head out, but I also use the camera too. It's meant to be a backup, not a replacement. Yep. Um, but there are a lot of safety features that I've noticed in this vehicle. One of them was the seat belt detector monitor has one for like every seat <laughs> all five seats it will let the driver know which seats are buckled and not buckled every time you start the vehicle so that's nice uh, rear uh, radar backup alert we've got the trajectory on the rear view camera when you are backing up at slow speeds you can hit this camera button right here and see all the way around you so a lot of good visibility options and then something that really came in handy for me, I took this down to Houston in a storm. There were tornadoes hitting the ground. That's the kind of weather I was in, but we have blind spot monitoring with the lights on the inside versus on the mirrors outside. What are your thoughts on that? I like it, it kind of threw me off at first, uh, but I think I probably like you and I've talked about like it better than it being on the outside just because of I, I've, it seems more noticeable to me um, being right here on the inside mm -hmm. than on the outside. And then, um, you know, because you were driving this, I was driving a Nissan Rogue Sport mm -hmm. that also had the same feature on it. And I like it. Yep. I mean, I, I like any car that has, I like that that's become kind of the norm is having a light right there. And if someone is in your blind spot and you put that blinker on, the car will beep at you and let you know mm -hmm. you've got a little display there in front of you. So there's quite a bit of safety tech in this small entry level vehicle that really helps uh, keep you safe and would, again, like I said in the intro, be a good starter car or a commuter car. So if you're looking for something for a kid in high school, kid going off to college, uh, th this would be a pretty sound option just for all the safety tech okay. in it alone. Why don't we take a step back and talk about the outside, the looks of this one. What are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I like the color. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, I like the blue gray colors always. I think it's cute. I like it. Um, my first car that I bought myself, not my first car ever, yeah. was a blue Mini Cooper. Hmm. And this is, this is bigger than that, obviously, it's a four-door, um, but they kind of remind me of, I mean, there's not a whole lot of cars on the road that look like the right. Kicks. I'm trying to see if uh, the name of the color is here on the window sticker, but it's not, so I will put it on the screen <laughs> for y'all right down there. But yes, updated styling, it was refreshed mid-pandemic oh. and was one of 10 vehicles from Nissan to get an update uh, during that time. We got a new Frontier, new Pathfinder, new Armada, a lot of updates coming from Nissan. And so this got a mid-cycle refresh. Um, I do, I kind of like the two-tone black roof mm -hmm. and the gray outside, that's a nice touch. And then this one's got roof racks for additional storage if we needed it uh, because this is, let's face it, it's a small car. You compared it to the Mini Cooper. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. But, but, no, but still much. kind of small. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what are your thoughts here on the inside? I think the styling is really nice. You know, up at the front, you've got kind of the soft leather 
Probably not real leather. Is it real leather? I was gonna play the game. Real well, yeah. leather or not? What I you know, you need to play. Um, just because of where I'm thinking this price point is, it's probably not. You are correct. This is synthetic leather, or as we used to call it back in the day, before, leather? <laughs> before it was uh, uncouth, uh, it's uh, vinyl. <laughs> oh. it's, it's Yeah, it, it's a very upscale vinyl. But you can't tell, and it's squishy too, yeah. which I like that. Um, but then you have the hard on the sides, mm -hmm. which I also like because, you know, you're not going to get like dings or mm -hmm. dirt Rips or, or tears. tears. Um, I like that. So I like the size of the steering wheel. I always like that. And then and all of the features. Bottom. It is a flat bottom, which I like. I like that. That's speaking of, the I'm going to lower it a little yeah. bit. The leather in this vehicle is around the steering wheel, so you do mm -hmm. have some leather, some leather. in this it's vehicle. It's nice. And then, and then it's got a different color stitching, which is yep, nice too. Which is also here on the seats and on the dash. Mm -hmm. What do you think of these two-tone, almost three-tone if you count the orange stitching? Yeah, I like I like the different colors. Anytime you can do just a little bit like that, like make two different a two different toned seat, mm -hmm. um, I think it just takes up takes it up a notch, you know, like sets it apart, makes sets it, it apart. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you mentioned the steering wheel. It's, I can see on the screen behind the steering wheel, 32 degrees outside. It actually got it cold, cold here in January in East Texas. Uh, what are your thoughts holding that steering wheel? It's nice and warm <laughs> because even though this is an economical car, it has seat warmers and steering wheel warm. So warmers. both front seats have two mode heated seats, uh, just the seat bottom and then seat or a steering wheel warmer, which the button for that is by your left knee. Uh, this one even has ambient footwell lighting that you can change the color of. I bring that up because down way below <laughs> by your ankle almost is the button to turn that on and off and to change the colors. You can cycle through a few it's on the dimmer side. You would definitely want to do that while you were stopped. Right. right. <laughs> so uh, as we set off in this, you're driving. Mm -hmm. I've driven it almost all of those nearly 500 miles on the odometer since we've gotten it. But what are your thoughts actually getting behind the wheel of this one? It's easy to drive. Mm -hmm. It's um, lower to the road and, you know, we've been driving in some questionable weather. I haven't ever not felt safe driving it and even so sometimes in uh, since I compared it to the Mini Cooper sometimes in the Mini Cooper driving around all of the big trucks in Texas I would feel unsafe but this doesn't feel that small where I feel like I'm gonna get run over on the road or like a big gust of wind is gonna push me off the road this it feels sturdy it feels solid driving around town I will say from my trek down to Houston and back in perhaps the worst weather I've ever tested a vehicle in, uh, the exterior color of this just blended in. It was like a gray out. And even still, like I felt pretty confident driving this around. It held its own. It, it was fairly good driving it through town. It is only front wheel drive. It's not all wheel drive. And I never felt scared or nervous behind the wheel of this. So yeah, to your That's point, uh, it, it holds, it, it holds its own on the road. And then we've got all that safety tech we mentioned earlier. So in this, underneath the hood, we have got a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder and a continuously variable transmission. What are your thoughts? You mentioned you were driving a Rogue Sport. You drove that while I was driving I down to Houston. Uh, very similar driving dynamics, but in this one with that CVT, what are your thoughts? Doesn't actually shift like you're used to, right? Yeah, I don't, I think I probably noticed it without being able to put words to it, mm -hmm. um, what it actually was. But to me, it feels like driving a little bit more like maybe an EV mm -hmm. where you're not having to, where you're not feeling the- The shifts. The shifting, yeah. the, you know. Um, in fact, 
I I had checked like is this a hybrid or because it because it did feel a little bit different mm -hmm. accelerating and stuff but um, I, I liked it I like that I know you but, have mixed opinions yeah. you've never really wanted for power or anything like that right it, it's, no no it's just been a good car to drive around town right right all right speaking of driving around town we are turning on the historic brick streets of downtown Tyler, Texas. We're talking to you. I think that was a little dramatic. <laughs> Our no. Tucker will do his wobbly head test. Tucker, what do you think? It's wobbly. It's wobbly? <laughs> it's wobbly. It is a smaller vehicle, so dips and potholes do impact it just a little bit more. But I can tell you from driving it around that I'm surprised how well this thing is buttoned together. It doesn't creak, it doesn't rattle, it's fairly <laughs> quiet. The only noise I experienced was his car seat when he wasn't riding in it. Mm. So it, it's solidly built, very quiet, very sturdy. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I like it. I concur. <laughs> um, it, is, it is sturdily built. Um, like you said, anything that gets you closer to the road, you're going to feel it a little bit more, but I wouldn't say that. It's a rough ride. Yep. And then uh, talking about technology in this one, uh, we already talked about the screen for the cameras, but we've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mm -hmm. wired. Mm -hmm. So we're plugged up through USB-C, but you can see it does everything we need there. So it's got a Bose personal sound system in it. You've got Ooh. some speakers here in your headrest. Oh, fancy. You haven't really gotten to test it out. I, 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 I tried it out just oh, a little uh, while I was driving down to Houston. A little disappointing. Not, yeah. didn't wow you? Didn't wow, it's good. It's really good. It is completely adequate. The interesting thing to me is if you go into the settings uh, for the sound, you can adjust the bass, the treble, and then the sensitivity to the speed of the vehicle and you really can't do anything else. You can't move it forward or back, left or right. You, you really are limited on your controls for the sound system here. But um, just something I noticed while playing around with it. Otherwise, the head unit's pretty quick and easy to use. Got some backup actual hard buttons here. Volume knob, tune knob, all that. We've got single zone climate, but it is automatic. We mentioned the heated seats. They remember. <laughs> it oh, remembers. Thank you. Uh, if you turn the vehicle off and back on, it remembers where you had that seat heat set. And again, playing to the fact that it's 32 degrees outside. I know, this warm start. seat's going to make me fall asleep. Yes. Oh, well, please don't. Please get yeah. home safely. But we have remote start in this one, too. So yeah, that's, that's nice. nice. I like it. It's nice to drive around. Yeah. Um, so uh, we mentioned Tucker back there in his car seat. Why don't we cut to... Uh, what it's like putting that child seat in the back of this Nissan Kicks. Okay, so child seat back here in the back seat. First thing I want to call out, this is a 60-40 split bench rear seat with the 60% here on the passenger side. There are top tethers all the way across for all three seats, but the lower latches are only here on the outboard seats. So that middle seat is going to have to use the seat belt but let's go ahead and bring the uh, child seat over and see what it's like putting it in this Nissan Kicks. All right, so the first thing I like to do when getting a forward-facing car seat in place is throw that top tether back underneath the headrest and then get the seat into place. Ours does have the hard tonneau cover covering up the back, so we'll worry about that when we get back there. But the lower latches are fairly easy to find. And other than the center seat belt covering up this one over here on the center side of the car seat, fairly easy to latch into place. And then you can tighten it down, no problem. And then we can move around back to the back to tighten up that top tether. Okay, so we drop that top tether down behind. You can see it's really easy to find, latch up and tighten into place. First time I had to put this car seat in, it was pouring down rain. So I actually did it from the passenger seat completely. Everything from the top tether to the lower latches. So it can be done. Scores pretty high on my ease of child seat installation. And we didn't even mention, so it is a little tight for the three of us. I've got my knees kind of in the dash here. Whereas uh, Tucker, how's your leg room back there, Tucker? 
Yeah, I would say the biggest penalty for him is his child seat. Uh, because if he were just in a booster, he would actually be sitting further back. Yeah. And I could scoot a little bit further back. So uh, as far as getting people all the way around in this, that child seat is more of a hindrance than it is a help in this situation. But yeah. I mean, the three of us are in here fine. Mm -hmm. I, I would say I probably, it's all have, right. I probably have more room behind you at five foot. Probably. Uh, than I hear, have here in front of Tucker in his child seat. All right, Holly, so we've talked tech, we've talked, um, safety we've talked power we've talked visibility what are your thoughts seeing out of this um i haven't had any problems it's got nice um, big windows it does have nice big windows i noticed again going back to my trip down to houston and back i could see out very nicely and then again the car's kind of looking out for you with some of the blind spots yeah uh but brings us to window sticker time okay before we get into the price i do want to bring to mention EPA rated 31 city, 36 highway, 33 combined. As we sit, it's got 493.9 miles that I have put on it, mostly highway miles to Houston and back, averaging 31.4 MPG. Mm. So, uh, really hanging out by that city number, even though we did a lot of highway driving. I did a lot of highway driving, so. Yeah, but some of those speed limits are 75 miles per hour. That's true. That's true. And you still got 69 miles to go. Yep, yep, yep. That's not bad. I, I have refilled it, so. Oh, you did? Yeah, I okay. had to refill it on the way back. Oh. But uh, what do you feel this car, as it sits, stickers for? Uh. I want to say 23. 23. So the starting price of this before any options is 22850. Okay. So you are pretty right spot on. There, right. uh, this does have the uh, premium plus package, which adds the uh, Permatex is what they call these. Or Primatex. Primatex appointed seats. Uh, what does that mean? It's the vinyl seats. Oh. <laughs> Uh, heated Otherwise, it's wet. Cloth or vinyl. Oh, the cloth. Yeah. Uh, heated front seats, heated steering wheel, uh, the security system, the hard cover over the rear uh, cargo area, and the Nissan connected services through Sirius XM. It also has roof crossbars for $435, and the ambient lighting is $575. Uh, but that also includes the auto dimming <laughs> rearview mirror. So. Oh. And two-tone paint is $650. The which one? Two-tone two -tone paint. paint. And the black alloy wheels, $495. Oh. For a grand total of $27,915 as this one sits. Okay. So yes, you could get this Kix SR for $23, as you guessed. But this one's got some options. Uh, we like the heated seats. We like the remote start. I like the auto dimming mirror. Uh, I like the infotainment system. So a pretty good car for, as we've mentioned, a starter vehicle, or if you just need something economical for a commute, th this would be it. I mean, if you're just sitting in traffic, uh, commuting to and from work in mm -hmm. a big city, um, this holds its own on the road. It does a good job and gets, positive 30 mpg depending on how you drive yes. so uh would you it's buy nice. it yes i would and tucker what are your thoughts on it you like it yep yep well, i like that it plays my dinosaur songs yeah no, that, like is that it plays his dinosaur songs through apple carplay if you want to see my thoughts on this and a quick walk around of the exterior and interior, maybe some of the stuff we didn't get to in this review, uh, be sure to check that video out on the channel. You can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk, or you can head to gtgaragetalk.com. Links to everything there. Tucker's narrating for me back there in the back seat. <laughs> You can find out Holly's behind the scenes thoughts and opinions and some stuff from Tucker by finding her on Instagram at female consumer. But as for us, we're gonna get back home and out of this cold, wet weather. So until and next time, And don't forget gearheads. Corey. Yep, and don't forget me. <laughs> until next time, gearheads. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> You're so silly.
bird glue. I glued your arm. Oh no, I'm gonna be stuck. I'm gonna bring my plants in. I put them out to get water and now they're gonna die. I didn't bring them back in. Uh, That's going in the blooper reel. <laughs> I thought you turned it off. Nope. <laughs> Can't reach them. Oh no! Yeah. <gasps> All right, Holly. Oh, are we starting? Yeah. 